Another romantic fling with the circus, as old circus wagons were carried on old flat cars from Circus World Museum in Baraboo to Milwaukee. The names on those flat cars and wagons are mostly for shows that no longer exist. But the days of the traveling circus are far from over, as reporter Art Hackett and photographer Jim Erskine discovered during some of their travels last summer. Bored with your job, you too can change your life. Before that, I was a social worker and a staff trainer for the state of Illinois. I was a bank teller. My husband was a chef. I was going to become a, a land use planner. I was a public school music, music teacher for 12 years. All of these people did with the help of Wayne Franson. I grew up on a dairy farm in Phillips, Wisconsin. And uh, we uh, had moved down by Merrill, so I went to high school in Merrill, Wisconsin. And then I went on to college. I taught school for six years. What did you teach? I taught industrial arts, welding, building construction, so sort of thing. Wayne Franson started training his pet goat to do tricks as, well, he called it a hobby. Oh, the hobby just grew. I had the goats, and I had <laughs> some horses, and I had some dogs that worked with that black mule that's out here. And it was just getting so that the hobby was getting out of hand. Yes, it did kind of get out of hand. Franson tried to get a circus to let him and his goats perform for free, if need be, but found little interest. And so <laughs> I just decided I was going to go out and start a circus. Wayne Franson, a grinning small town farm boy from Amherst Junction, Wisconsin, is now a circus impresario. <laughs> An impresario who works nearly 18 hours a day, seven days a week, for about nine months out of the year. He is the proprietor of the Friends and Brothers Circus. Although it travels across maybe one-fourth of the country, this circus calls Wisconsin home. Pull! Today, it is Coloma a city just south of Stevens Point with an official population of 367 most likely bored people. On a hot summer day like this, a day when the potatoes aren't yet ready to dig up, this is the sort of place Wayne Franzen says should provide a good audience. But he takes no chances. The local sponsors from the Lions Club have put up the posters, but you can't advertise too much. Coloma is a small town but small towns are what keep friends and circus in business. It is a small town phenomenon for one, first of all. In the bigger cities, you'll have some of the indoor shows coming in, playing indoors. And I, I don't know, I think the real people take to this more, the idea of taking a chance on something that it might be raining on and this sort of thing, you know. And so uh, it, it fits maybe more in the rural people's interests, although that's not a fair statement because we do very good in cities too sometimes, or in bedroom communities where people are big city oriented, but we're playing in the suburbs. If you think about it, circuses are as, as much a part of Wisconsin's history and tradition as agriculture is. If Russian circuses generally have a bear act, a real Wisconsin circus deserves to have Alice in Dairyland on an elephant. At least in Coloma, the Franzen Circus has it. Circuses often imitate the nations from which they come. Acts mirror the local folklore. America's circuses, perhaps mirroring a nation that is downright fetishistic about growth, merged and combined, creating names limited only by the length of the flat cars they traveled on. But not so with the Franzen Show. I hurt myself from an advertising standpoint by sticking to this European one ring style because somehow the American people are hung up on three rings, or when they see somebody advertising five rings, it means, you know, wow, this is going to be great. There, at one time, I guess maybe we ran out of seating room, and so they stretched these rings out so you could actually watch a whole show in a, a second ring. It's, it makes kind of a mess because it's like trying to watch three TVs at the same time, watch three baseball games going on at the same time. Before about 600 people sitting on metal bleachers mounted on trailers, the acts continue. Circus performers don't have to come from foreign cities with funny-sounding names. They can also come from an American city with a foreign, funny-sounding name, like Sheboygan. My father's a circus fan, is what he is, and he, um, when, Wayne op when Wayne started the show 12 years ago, he, Wayne came and saw him about booking his show in Wisconsin, and 
So he started booking. That's when he started booking as an agent. So Heidi Cassidy is now the show's business manager, organist, and aerial act. So we used to travel when, with the dates my dad booked, and um, that's how I got interested in the trapeze. And I did all the crazy things under the book. I mean, I, I did it from a gym set is what I did, a little kid gym set. That's where I learned everything from, and, and um, just tried whatever they did. And I went home and did a lot of stupid things, but um, I did it, you know, because I didn't know those gimmicks to anything, or I just took plastic jump ropes and put them around mine and my sister's neck and was going to do a neck to neck spin. My mother would have got us, we would have both hung ourselves. I mean, it was just things like that, you know. You also don't have to come from a long line of gypsies who have been on wheels for generations. My dad is a metallurgical engineer and uh, my sister is a doctor and my brother works for an insurance company and my other sister is a Lutheran minister. And you ran away and, and joined the circus? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Jens Larson is an Ivy Leaguer, Dartmouth 81, come Franzen 85. Larson was on the gymnastic team at Dartmouth. When he had a chance to join another circus four years ago, he didn't even think about not taking it. It's a very, very uh, special art form, but I think the potential of the format, clowns, animals, people doing things that you've never seen before, you know, there's something uh, very special about that. As a performer, you kind of see people, hopefully you see people smile at you and, and react to you in a way that they don't react to someone on a TV show or a movie. There's kind of, that's you out there. You're not acting somebody else, that's you. And so there's this very, very personal thing um, that people don't get a chance to, uh, to get involved with usually. It's live entertainment too. Nowadays, that's nothing to be taken for granted, especially in a small town. But not for long. You do two shows you leave. Since they left Florida March 6th, the show has played in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and of course Wisconsin. They will see at least five additional states before they get back to their winter quarters. Or at least they hope so. Hold on a second. It's part of the way of life. The words routine maintenance are not necessarily part of the circus vocabulary. Jumper cables are. Everything's uh, satisfactory here. Oh, yeah. Today's show is in Athens, as it's known officially, or Athens, as it's known locally. Franzen is getting closer to his hometown. People notice. Which Franzen did you come from? Where, where, did, you, where did you come out of? What town? Now? Yeah. No, I mean, what town did you come out oh, of? Oh, Amherst uh, Junction. Is that where you lived, uh, yeah. Amherst Junction? I knew some friends out there at, uh, you know, they're an elder and through there. Oh, yeah. yeah. This has been my desire uh, to own a show. That's why I traveled uh, when I was a high school kid. Uh, it was the only job that I could get on the circus that they offered me, see? Franzen's visit to Athens also draws one of his biggest fans, former state senator and one-time circus fat boy, Clifford Tiny Krieger. And he had to rely on circus fans all over the country to do some booking for him. And of course, uh, I got around and I had those 12 counties in northeastern Wisconsin, Crandon, Rhinelander, and Eagle River and through that area. And naturally, when I went to meetings, particularly with volunteer fire departments, uh, I'd ask them if they were interested in sponsoring a circus. The two have been friends ever since. You know, you look a lot better this season, you know that? Well, I don't know. I don't know if I feel any better. <laughs> I've done a horse style on me. <laughs> when it is? In winter quarters, they got on. Oh, and I never there. Stood on his hind legs and fell right over backwards. Oh, boy. Right on top of me. And my shoulder still hurts. That happened in the first week of February. Uh -huh. and the back of my neck here still bothers me a little bit, and this cord on the side of my neck is kind of tore up, you know, must have ripped it, so. Yeah. But anyhow, I, I'm gonna live. <laughs> Athens will provide an even bigger crowd. More people to ride elephants at a dollar a shot. More people to buy cotton candy and popcorn. Be a dollar seventy-five. Helping to come up with the $3,000 to $3,500 a day it takes to keep the show on the road. 
it's like anything else. You get out of it what you put into it. And if I looked at it in terms of an hourly wage, I'd be really in trouble. But I, I make a living doing what I did for kicks as a hobby before I started it. So uh, I can call it work at any point I want to, and I can turn around and call it my play, too. They aren't from circus families, but maybe they are circus families in the making. Franson's sons now do the goat act. Heidi Cassidy enlisted her husband, who was a one-time chef. Now I was going to leave with the circus, and uh, I stayed a year just so I would have enough money to buy a trailer and everything. So it took me that year to convince him to even consider going with the circus. And um, so I stayed one more year, and I said, well, this is it. You know, if you don't decide it this year, I'm going one way or another. And we weren't married at the time. And um, so he came to visit for a weekend. And we happened to see the act we're doing now, the Cradle Act. Um, there's another couple on the show doing it. And um, he enjoyed it, and he thought he might like to do it. And every show ends the same way. Bill Reynolds, the ringmaster, trumpet player, and animal handler, the guy who used to be a school music teacher, gets up and says that the Friends and Brothers Circus, like the Marine Corps, needs a few good men. If you would like to travel with the circus on a permanent basis, or if you would like to earn a little spending money, be at the bandstand immediately after the second show this evening, about 9.30, and you too can be in show business. Finally tonight, the mail. Our special report on the trial of Judge Daniel P. McDonald, 